Hello and welcome to carb counting. You may have been asked by your healthcare professional to count carbs and you're wondering how to do it. Today we'll go over the basics of carb counting, different methods of carb counting, and how to read a nutrition facts label. Then we'll practice carb counting and test your knowledge. We'll also look at some advanced carb counting topics. And lastly, we'll take a look at how carb counting and insulin pump therapy work. Food contains three main nutrients, protein, fat, and carbs. When carbs are digested, they get broken down into glucose or sugar, which enters the bloodstream and makes blood glucose levels go up. Insulin helps glucose move from the bloodstream into cells where it can be used for energy. Now, does this mean that because carbohydrates make your sugars rise that they're bad for you? No, carbohydrates should be a part of your daily intake. Choose healthy sources of carbohydrates like vegetables, whole grains, beans, and fruits. You just need to learn how to make them a part of your diet. Carbohydrate counting, or carb counting for short, is one approach to meal planning. If you have diabetes, you may have been asked to count your carbs to help manage your glucose levels after you eat. If you take insulin, carb counting can be a great way to help you figure out how much insulin to give for the food you're eating. What is carb counting? Carb counting is adding up the grams of carbs you want to eat. Why count carbs? To match your insulin to the food you want to eat and better manage glucose levels to avoid highs and lows. The amount of insulin needed by the body will vary depending upon the amount of carbohydrate you eat. If you eat more carbs, they make more glucose, which means you will need more insulin. If you eat less carbs, they make less glucose, so you need less insulin. Your healthcare professional will help you figure out your insulin dose based on how many carbs you eat. To count carbohydrates, you must first know which foods contain carbohydrate. Here are some foods that contain carbohydrate. Starches, such as breads, cereals, crackers, rice, beans, grains, and pasta, soy products like tofu, and starchy vegetables like potatoes, peas, and corn. Fruits and fruit juices, as well as milk and yogurt, also contain carbs. Of course, sweets and desserts have carbs and include things like candy, cookies, cake, and pastries, ice cream, pudding, honey, table syrup, sugar, jelly, regular soda, and sports drinks. Now that you know what foods have carbs in them, how do you count them? Most people count the grams of carbohydrates in their food. One of the easiest ways to figure out how many grams of carbs are in your food is to read a nutrition facts label. Reading nutrition facts labels is very helpful when counting carbs. Even though there are many items on a label, there are only two things that you need to focus on for glucose management, serving size and total carbohydrate grams. First, check the serving size on a label. For this food, the serving size is a half a cup. Next, look at the total grams of carbohydrate to get the complete picture of the effect on your glucose levels. For this food, a half cup serving is 42 grams of carbs. And if you want to eat one cup of food, it's 84 grams of carbs. Sometimes you may also want to look at the servings per container. Can you think of a time when you drank an entire bottle of sports drink? You may have assumed your sports drink was just one serving, but it was actually two. Well, in that case, you would need to do some math in your head and double the total grams of carbohydrates. In this day and age, there are many resources to help you count carbs right at your fingertips. MyFitnessPal is a popular app and website, and it's easy to use to look up carbs. Calorie King provides nutrition information, including carbs, for thousands of foods and is available as a book, app, or on the internet at calorieking.com. I also suggest people ask Siri or Alexa or Hey Google, how many carbs are in? Some other favorites are Figly or BiteSnap. That's an app where you can take pictures or scan a barcode. New apps are getting created all the time, so try one and see what works best for you. One of the most important parts of carb counting is knowing how much of a certain food you're eating. You can use a scale, measuring cups and spoons, or even your hands. 
Measuring helps give you a visual of how serving sizes look on a plate or in a bowl. Using your hands can also help you estimate portion sizes. This is a good tool for when you're not at home. For instance, a portion of food that could fit in your cupped hand is about a half a cup. Another portion of food that's the size of a woman's closed fist is about one cup. Or the size of a man's fist, it's about a cup and a half. And many people who carb count begin to memorize how many carbs are in the foods they commonly eat. So no matter if you're cooking at home or eating out, you can estimate how many carbs you're eating by memorizing a few basics. Here are some commonly eaten food groups and serving sizes that contain approximately 15 grams of carbs. One small slice of bread is about 15 grams of carbs. A half a cup of juice is about 15 grams of carbs. Take a moment and review the others. One cup of milk is about 15 grams of carbs. One tablespoon of honey is about 15 grams of carbs. And don't forget that sweetened drinks, sports drinks, and candy contain carbs. Also, all vegetables contain some carbohydrate, but you usually only need to count the starchy vegetables because the others are very low in carbs. Let's talk about fiber. It's important for everyone to choose a variety of fiber containing foods like vegetables, fruits, beans, and whole grains. These foods contain vitamins and minerals that help keep us healthy. When it comes to fiber, some people like to dig into the nutrition label a little deeper. Did you know that fiber is generally not digested and converted to glucose like other carbohydrates? Because of this, some people will subtract the grams of fiber from the total carbohydrate especially if there are more than five grams of fiber per serving. And other people just ignore grams of fiber altogether. Talk to your diabetes healthcare team if you have any questions about what you should do when it comes to fiber and carb counting. Another fact that isn't always known is that sugar-free and no sugar added don't necessarily mean carbohydrate-free. Always check the total carbohydrate to determine if you will need to take insulin to cover it. Some sugar-free products contain sugar alcohols, like sorbitol or xylitol, which taste sweet. Sugar alcohols aren't fully absorbed by the body, so they impact glucose levels differently than table sugar. Most experts agree that subtracting half the grams of sugar alcohols from the total grams of carbohydrate is a good rule of thumb when it comes to sugar, alcohols, and carb counting. But be sure to speak with your diabetes healthcare team how to best handle foods that contain sugar alcohols. Some people who take insulin have a carb ratio. A carb ratio is the amount of carbs one unit of insulin will cover. You might be wondering, how do I use a carb ratio? Count the grams of carbs you're going to eat, divide it by your carb ratio, which will give you the amount of insulin you'll need for the food you're eating. For example, say you've got five people all with different carb ratios. See how, many, see how much insulin each person would need based on eating 50 grams of carbs using their carb ratio. Now let's do a little practice to see how comfortable you are with carb counting. Which of these foods contain carbohydrate? Review the list and the ones that contain carb will get a star next to it. Were you able to identify all of them? Which statements are true and which are false? 
you should always try to avoid eating carbohydrates. Of course that's false. Carbohydrates should be a part of your daily intake. You just need to learn how to manage them. Selecting healthy carbohydrates and being careful about portion sizes will provide your body with valuable nutrients. True, healthy carbohydrate choices like vegetables, beans, and whole unprocessed grains will provide your body with the energy, vitamins, and minerals that it needs. Just count the carbs you're going to eat. The more carbs you eat, the more insulin you need. Absolutely true. If your body still makes its own insulin, it needs more, it needs to make more insulin when you eat larger amounts of carbs. And if you take insulin, you need to take a larger amount of insulin the more carbs you eat. Which two things should you focus on when using a nutrition facts label to count carbs? If you said serving size and total carbohydrate, you are correct. Use the food label on the right to answer these questions. One serving equals two bars. Two bars equal how many grams of carbohydrate? 36 grams of carbs. Then how many grams of carbohydrate will be in one bar? 18 grams since it is half a serving. Great job on those practice exercises. Using the estimating carbohydrate method, how many grams of carbs would you say are in this chicken sandwich and a cup of mixed fruit? The answer is B, 45 grams of carbs. The two slices of bread are roughly 30 grams of carbs total, and the cup of fruit made up of melon and some grapes is another 15 grams of carbs. Add 30 grams and 15 grams, and this meal would be 45 grams of carbs. Once you're able to identify and count the number of carbs you're eating in one sitting, a carb ratio may help you match your insulin to the food you want to eat. Just like any insulin dosing, carb ratios are provided by your healthcare provider. For example, if my carb ratio is one unit for every 10 grams of carbohydrate, if I know I eat one apple, which is 15 grams of carbs, how many units would I need? 1.5 units. Now let's look at a few more examples using the same 1 to 10 carb ratio. 30 grams of carbs, I would need 3 units. And if I had this 60 gram carb meal, I would need 6 units. And if I eat 90 grams of carbs, I would need 9 units. Here's some information for our advanced carb counters. As we have previously learned, carbs impact glucose levels the most. Meat, fish, eggs, and cheese are all considered protein sources and contain little to no carbohydrate. Some people eat more protein and limit carbs as a strategy to manage glucose levels. Protein eaten in small three ounce portions, such as the size of a deck of cards, does not typically affect blood sugar. Protein can have an effect on your blood sugar if your protein serving is larger than a deck of cards. Check your glucose levels more often to see how protein affects your levels. Some people find that they need some insulin for meals high in protein and little to no carbs, for example, eggs. It's important to talk to your diabetes healthcare team about how to manage protein and insulin. Some foods are high in fat or 100% fat. Examples of these are butter, oils, avocados, cheese, mayonnaise, and sour cream. 
fats do not break down into glucose. But foods with a lot of fat can slow down the breakdown of carbohydrate to sugar, which can delay the release of sugar into the bloodstream. As a result, sugar levels may not rise as much as expected one to two hours after eating. Instead, you might see sugar levels rise three or four hours later. So some people spread their insulin out over time when they eat foods like pizza, a quesadilla, or fast food to help manage glucose levels. For the group of people who are taking mealtime insulin for protein and or fat, it's suggested to count grams of protein, divide it in half, and estimate how much insulin you would give for that amount as carbs. For example, say you have two eggs, which is 12 grams of protein. Divide 12 by two and you get six grams. Estimate how much insulin you would give for six grams of carbs. If you think you may want or need to bolus for protein and fat, check glucose levels more often to see what works best for you. And be sure to discuss this with your healthcare team. Insulin pump therapy delivers insulin closest to the way the normal human pancreas delivers insulin. It also offers precise and customized meal insulin delivery. Taking mealtime insulin with an insulin pump is as easy as one, two, three. One, count the carbs in what you're gonna eat. Two, enter your carbs into the pump. Three, the pump will estimate the amount of insulin you need using its calculator. All you have to do is deliver. Meet Laura. Laura counts carbs. She has more freedom when making food choices. She knows that when she adds up her carbs, her pump will estimate the amount of insulin she needs for the food she's eating. Carb counting in her insulin pump help her keep her glucose levels in an ideal range. Thank you.